Good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to start with uh, calculating the impulse response of discrete time LTI system. So let me start with my presentation first. Okay. So, if we want to find uh, the discrete, uh, the unit impulse response of a discrete time system, let us start by considering first a discrete time single input, single output system. So, this is our system to which we are going to apply this input xn, and this system will be generating an output yn. And here we are interested in finding how to calculate this output y n okay now before starting anything let us see exactly what is the meaning of the impulse response so to the same system if we are going to apply an input that we will be representing as del n del n is the impulse function if we are going to apply this impulse function as an input to this system the output that we are going to get over here we will be calling it as the impulse response of the system right so first thing that we will uh, remember from here that if we are going to apply the impulses to any system and whatever is the output that we are going to get over here we will be calling that as the impulse response coming next uh, impulse response characterization and convolution sum basically we are interested in finding the output of a discrete time system by applying any arbitrary input signal right and here we will try to find or we will uh, that this can be calculated by finding the impulse response of the system so cons first consider the shifting property of discrete impulse sequence uh, let us say if i am going to uh, multiply my signal xn with delta n where delta n is an impulse function and we know that this impulse function will be having a value of 1 at n equals to 0 and it is having a value of 0 at all other points, right? This is our impulse function. So if we are multiplying xn with del n, we are going to get the output that will be x0 del 0 because del n function will be having a uh, value of 1 at n equals to 0. At, uh, at all other points, it will be 0. So, we will be getting x0 del n. Similarly, if we will try to find uh, another values, so we can, uh, general, uh, we can uh, write this in the generalized form as xn del of n minus k. From here, you can see that if you want to find x1, that will be n minus 1. Similarly, x2 will be del x2 into del of n minus 2 and so on. This is going to give you the value x1 this is going to give you the value x2 and so on. So, in general terms, you can write it as xn del of n minus k, okay, which is equals to xk del of n minus k. Now, to our system, we are going to apply the input xn. This is an arbitrary input signal that we are going to apply to our discrete time LTI system. DT stands for discrete time and LTI stands for linear time invariant system. Now, uh, we have assumed that xn is equals to 0 for all the values of n that are less than 0. That is for n is equals to minus 1, n is equals to minus 2 and so on. So, we can represent our signal xn as x0 into del n plus x1 del of n minus 1 plus x2 del of n minus 2 and so on. Or in general, we can write our signal xn as summation for k is equals to 0 to infinity xk del of n minus k for the values of n starting from 0 till infinity. Okay. Now, this is the general expression that is used for representing any signal xn. And here, since we have assumed that k, uh, the value of n is starting from uh, 0 only before that it is 0, that means here we have considered a causal system. If instead of that, if we are having a non-causal signal, in that uh, the value of n will be uh, having the values from minus 1, minus 2 and so on, right? 
So here you can see that uh, consider this finite duration sequence xn is equals to 2, 4, 0 and 3. And here one arrow is placed to represent that this one is our 0th sample. Now, uh, if we want to resolve this sequence xn into sum of weighted impulse response, this can be written as xn is twice of del n plus 1 plus 4 time of del n plus 0 multiplied with del of n minus 1 plus 3 multiplied with del of n minus 2. So, in general, we can represent our signal, uh, which is represented here in the form of the sequence as 2, 4, 0, 3. In terms of the sum of weighted impulse response, this signal can be represented as xn is equals to twice del of n plus 1 plus 4 times of del n plus 3 times of del of n minus 2. Likewise, you can represent any of the sequence in terms of sum of weighted impulse responses. Okay. So, here this is a system to which we are going to apply the input xn and it will be giving us the output yn. Right. Now, as you have seen that we have represented this xn as the summation of the weighted impulse responses as we have done it over here. This xn is from k is equals to minus infinity to infinity xk del of n minus k. So, here this xn is nothing but summation for the values k is equals to minus infinity to infinity xk del of n minus k. This is our signal xn. This signal we are going to apply as an input to this system for which uh, the impulse response is given as hn and it is going to give us the output yn, right? So, this output yn will be nothing but the transformation of whatever the signal xn that we have applied over here, right? Which on the other hand is equals to xn we will represent as k is equals to minus infinity to infinity xk del of n minus k. This can also be written as summation k is equals to minus infinity to infinity xk into transformation of del of n minus k. Right. This is equals to summation k is equals to minus infinity to infinity xk and transformation of del of n minus k is h of n minus k. This is the output response of our system which we have calculated as summation from k is equals to minus infinity to infinity xk h of n minus k. Right. So, this particular summation is called convolution sum and this is calculated like this for all the values of n which are greater than or equals to 0. Now equation that is represented being over here that is y n is equals to summation k is equals to minus infinity to infinity x k h of n minus k it is nothing but the convolution representation uh, for calculating the output and can be represented as x n convolution h n. Convolution is represented by this asterisk symbol. So, if you want to calculate output response of any system that can be calculated by performing the convolution of the input with the impulse response of the system. So, here we can say that a discrete time LTI system is completely described by its impulse response HN, right? So, we have seen here that if we want to find the output of any system, that is equals to the convolution of the input with the impulse response of the system and we will be calculating it using this relationship for k is equals to minus infinity to infinity xk h of n minus k. So, this is the formula that is to be used for finding the convolution of any system, right? Uh, there are number of methods for finding the convolution. Here we are going to start with the first method that is known as the tabulation method. So, let us try to understand this uh, method by uh, doing one example. So, here in this example, we have to determine the output of an LTI system whose impulse response is given as Hn is equals to 1, 3, 2, 1. And the input applied over here is Xn that is equals to 1, 4, 3, 2 with 4 as the 0th sample. Okay. So, we will start uh, the, by uh, solving this question first by representing this Xn in terms of some of the weighted impulse responses. So, we will be writing this Xn 
as it is equals to 4 del n plus twice of del n minus 1 plus twice of del n minus 2 and this one multiplied with del of n minus l n plus 1. So this is uh, Xn represented in sum of terms of the sum of the weighted impulse responses. Okay, this is the first thing that we have done. Now, secondly, what we have to do, the response for various terms are as follows. Like, let us say this is our system and if we are going to apply del of n plus 1 as an input to this system, this will be giving me the response h of n plus 1. Similarly to this system, if I am going to apply del n output, I am going to h of n. Uh, all these I have represented over here in this table. If input is del of n plus 1, it is going to give the output h of n plus 1. 4 del n will be giving the response 4 h n. 3 del of n minus 1 will be giving this response and twice of del of n minus 2 will be giving this response. Now we know that output y n will be nothing but the summation of the individual responses of all these inputs that we have applied to this system. So output that we are going to get over here will be uh, the transformation of this del of n plus 1 will be h of n plus 1. Transformation of this del n will be h of n. Transformation of del of n minus 1 will be h of n minus 1. Transformation of this del of n minus 2 will be h of n minus 2. So ultimately, our output by n will be h of n plus 1 plus 4 times of h of n plus 3 times of h of n minus 1 plus twice of h of n minus 2. Now we have to calculate what will be the values of this h of n plus 1, h of n, h of n minus 1 and h of n minus 2 where uh, the value of h n is being given to us as 1, 3, 2, 1. So by looking into the value of this h n which is equals to 1, 3, 2, 1, let us try to find h of n plus 1, h of n, h of n minus 1 and twice of h of n minus 2. So this I have done over here. Uh, this one is the 0th sample. This is first, this is second and this is third. For finding h of n plus 1, I have to shift it by one place towards left direction. So h of n, n plus 1 will be uh, 1, 3, 2, 1 with 3 being at the 0th value. Here I have represented the number of the sample and this is sample value. Similarly, h of n, h of n is having the value of 1 at n is equals to 0, 3 at n is equals to 1, 2 at n is equals to 2 and 1 at n is equals to 3. And all these values are to be multiplied with 4 which I have done over here by multiplying by 4 and here I have calculated the value of 4 times of h of n that is coming out to be 4, 3 into 4 is 12, 2 into 4 is 8 and 1 into 4 is 4. Similarly h of n minus 1 we will calculate and multiply it by 3 for calculating this value. h of n minus 1 is obtained by shifting this by one unit towards right direction. So 0th sample will become first sample which is 1 over here. This 3 will be our second sample. This is our third sample and this is our fourth sample and we have multiplied it with 3. Uh, 1 into 3 is 3, 3 into 3 is 9, 2 into 3 is 6 and 3 into 1 is 3. Similarly, twice of h of n minus 2 uh, is obtained by shifting this h of n, uh, n uh, two places towards right direction. So we have obtained this as 1 at the sample value 2, 3 at sample number 3, 2 at sample 4 and 1 at sample number 5. By multiplying it by 2, we have obtained 2, 6, 4 and 2. So by this, we have obtained, in this table, we have calculated the value of h of n plus 1, 4 times of h of n, 3 times of h of n minus 1, twice of h of n minus 2. And for calculating this yn, we have to perform the summation of all these values. So this uh, we can obtain by performing the summation for each column. Like if I'm going to add the values 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, I'll be getting yn is equals to 1 at n is equals to minus 1. Similarly, this 3 plus 4 is 7 at n is equals to 0. 2 plus 12 plus 3 is giving us a summation of 17. 1 plus 8 plus 9 plus 2 is equals to 20. 4 plus 6 plus 6 is 16. 3 plus 4 is 7. 2 is over here. 
So these are the different values of y n that we have obtained and this is representing our zeroth sample. So we will put a arrow over here for representing this as the zeroth sample. This is minus first, this is first, second, third, fourth and fifth. So like this we can calculate the output response of any system by using the uh, tabulation method for obtaining the convolution summation. Okay, so this is all for today. In the next class, we will uh, study how to perform the convolution using the graphical method and other methods of calculation. Thank you very much.